Welcome to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast, where we explore the exciting science behind heart rate variability. The material discussed in this podcast should not be taken as medical advice. Please check with your medical provider to make sure any suggestions or strategies are right for you. Visit us at the OptimalHRV.com website to learn more about the Optimal HRV app, download a free copy of Matt's book, Heart Rate Variability, and also get show notes and additional resources around heart rate variability and its application. Welcome, friends, to the Heart Rate Variability Podcast. I am Matt. I'm here with Dave and Dr. Rob, Dr. Dave and Dr. Rob today. So um, I'm really excited for this conversation. I've been looking at uh, uh, Dr. Gregory's website, and uh, I see a clean bar in there uh, for free weights. And uh, to bring me back to my college career, I, I was afraid if I cleaned anything at this point, I'd uh, probably break every bone in my body. Uh, but I do see, like, on your website, you got a picture of me holding up the earth there. So uh, I, I like that. I need to get that for, for my wall. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this conversation. Before I uh, jump into it, though, we, we do have. Uh, you know, kind of a big announcement, especially if you're me and you love audiobooks. Um, I'm listening to two right now, just got through another one. Uh, our uh, book and Dave's book and Ina's book, uh, The Heartbeat of Business, is now on Audible. It's on the Apple Woo-hoo! Store. Uh, so if you've been waiting to listen to it and just like, ah, man, I really want to live the book, but I'm an audiobook person, it is there. Uh, for your consumption. We worked with a great producer. Uh, She's got one of the best voices, I believe, in the business. Uh, And I say that because when she reads my words, I think my IQ jumps like 30 uh, points. It's amazing to hear like, I hate my own words until she talks them and then it's great. So uh, again, heartbeat of business, uh, out pretty much uh, Audible, Apple, iTunes, a couple other stores as well. Uh, that we have that out. So I just had to throw that announcement out. And uh, Dr. Dave, I will let you do a little bit more formal introduction of uh, our great guest today. All right. Well, uh, so today we have uh, Dr. Rob Gregory with us and he is, um, well, I am very fortunate enough to get to call him a friend and uh, somebody that I've known for quite some time at this point. Uh, Geez, Dr. Rob and I have probably known each other for darn near 10 years. Um, it's been 10 or 11 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Rob is, uh, one of the brightest guys that I, that I have the pleasure of knowing and getting to work with on a regular basis. Um, he is a chiropractor as well as an acupuncturist as well. He is a former power lifter. Um, and, and when it comes to health and fitness, I knows just about everything about everything, uh, legitimately I'm, I'm saying it, Rob, and, um, <laughs> and as a fellow practitioner, um, I am fortunate enough to have Dr. Rob right down the street and I share a lot of my patients with you, Dr. Rob. <laughs> um, and that is because Dr. Rob is so amazing at what he does, uh, with acupuncture specifically that when I have something tricky with a patient or I have, or I have a patient who's 90% of the way there, I say, you know what? You got to go see this guy. He's going to take you the rest of the way, or we got to do combined care because I alone am not going to be enough. We need to get Dr. Rob in the game. And every single person that I send over to Dr. Rob comes back to me and says, why wasn't I seeing him before? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so today we are going to learn a little bit about what Dr. Rob does. Um, so with that, uh, the first thing I wanted to start with, uh, we have talked plenty about chiropractic on this podcast. So, uh, so all of our guests are, are familiar with what that is, but Dr. Rob, could you start us off with what is acupuncture? Sure. You know, there are, there are some different, you know, I guess definitions that some people will have with acupuncture, but really acupuncture is using, um, a, a system. It's really a, its own system of Chinese medicine or Eastern medicine, as far as even diagnostics and how we talk about the body and how we talk about pathology, but really the, the, you know, the bones of acupuncture are getting to the right 
understanding of what's going on with the body, where you're going to need to treat. And the, the usage is actually just still form needles. They're solid needles, nothing injected, just a solid shaft needle, very thin, goes into a certain area of the body, usually along a meridian or a pathway, what we consider to be a, a chi pathway or an energy pathway that's going to affect that pathway and that transfer of energy or chi, that movement of chi and energy throughout the body. When I talk to my patients, I tell them we're all big batteries. And so we're moving that energy throughout the body. And sometimes we get these areas that are stuck and this stagnation or this blockage of chi or energy or movement. And what we do with those needles is we help to break up some of those restrictions. And so we kind of break the dams, so to speak, and allow that energy and that, that transfer of chi so it can move throughout its whole cycle and kind of move through the body a little bit better. That is awesome. Uh, and, uh, and Matt, do you have any questions being that as I know oh, that you I you know, I have questions. <laughs> Dave, Dave, it, I was going to hold off. Like I was going to let you do a follow up. Do you really want me to follow up on that? Handing it off right there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, well, I, I got, I got a, uh, really, uh, a, a pro, I don't know. I'm just going to throw it out there. See where, where you go with it. Obviously, uh, somebody who uh, has a doctor before their name uh, and knows about heart rate variability as well. One of the things that, um, and, and I don't have expertise in the area, but I've practiced Tai Chi, uh, Qigong, and uh, I've kind of done Wing Chun in a Tai Chi form uh, because being six seven and really skinny, if I don't control the center line in a fight, I, like I said, if Dave gets me to the ground, I'm done. Like I learned that I did one, uh, one set of Aikido classes and I realized if you get me to the ground, I am done. So uh, just over. Yeah. So, and again, uh, doing Tai Chi, like if, if the world slows down into slow motion, I might have a chance, but uh, that's about my, my best strategy is not to get in a fight to begin with. But one of the things of, of my like really <laughs> sort of nerdy fascination with chi and the energy pathways and acupuncture um, is what we're learning about the vagal nerve. Um, you know, the, this, this wandering nerve throughout our body that touches every organ, I think except one, um, but like is do it. And, you know, you overplace the, the chart of the ventral vagal nerve with some of those, you know, sometimes thousand year old Chinese energy charts and it's not a perfect one-to-one -one match by any extent, and I'm not making that argument, but boy, is it pretty close. And I would just love to ask you with sort of holding that expertise in, in both areas, uh, both the traditional and the modern scientific, just I'd love to get your thoughts on what you see modern science uh, around the vagal nerve and how that complements um, you know, your understanding of chi and some of those uh, ancient understandings, which I know have developed, they didn't stop developing three, 4,000 years ago. Sure. Yeah, uh, they're modernized as well. Uh, but I'd love to just get your thoughts on on that relationship. Yeah, you know, honestly, that's, that's an awesome question, because it does, you know, like Chinese medicine kind of gets pushed into this, like, yeah, that's how it happened, or that's what it was. But now look at modern medicine. Yep. And honestly, like that's one of my favorite things about kind of how Dr. Dave and I work together and how I work together with a few other physicians in the area, both medical doctors, as well as other chiropractors and naturopaths, um, and really working in with how, you know, essentially they're both, the, they're talking about the same thing, just in two different languages. It's literally just a nuance of terminology, right? It's just kind of the syntax of it. And so when we talk about, you know, you know, the, the analogy of like you, you have a six on the ground and one guy's on one side and the other guy's on the other, you see a six, I see a nine, mm -hmm. right? How we look at it is really the biggest difference. And so when we talk about movement of chi and blood, we talk about, you know, yin and yang and the differences in chi and energy and, you know, how the liver controls the sinews and all these other concepts in Chinese medicine that we talk about. When you start to put it into context of like Western medicine, even though the the terminology is a little different. It's kind of skewed. And if you can't look past it, you have trouble. Right. And we see these, we see these parallels and I'll, I'll talk to patients sometimes. And I'll say, you know, if you look at a Venn diagram, you know, you've got Western medicine and Eastern medicine and where the two start to really overlap, that's really where the meat is. And that's kind of the thing that I start to see. And so you own that part of it. 
And I think blending the two, you just get a fuller perspective. So, you know, when I treat um, like tinnitus or vertigo, um, something like that, and a lot of times I use that through the ear um, as, you know, as sometimes a part of an autonomic dysfunction. And so we'll treat part of the liver channel or the liver organ in the ear, as well as other liver points throughout the body to help clear the liver channel. And so it helps to, to regulate liver yang and liver energy throughout that liver channel, because the liver, when it becomes backed up, we get liver yang rising in, in the Eastern medicine context, which can give us headaches. Um, if we have liver blood deficiency, blurry vision and spotty vision, like, you know, kind of spots in the eye, um, we start to get tinnitus, we start to get vertigo, we start to have high blood pressure, red face, easily irritable, um, all these, all these things that we can kind of put together. And when I talk about that to people in Western medicine, kind of parallel, we know that stress, or, or I'm sorry, pain and depression go together. Mm -hmm. So one can cause the other there. It's cyclical in Chinese medicine. We don't differentiate between mental, emotional situations and physical. So they're paralleled as well. And so when we start to talk about how all these things kind of come together, Western and Eastern medicine, just, just, I guess, approach it a little differently and talk about it a little differently, but at the end, the outcomes can be very similar. And so those outcomes are pretty much the same, which, you know, in, you know, in regards to the vagal nerve, we start to talk about, again, it's distribution is so widespread, right? There's almost no way to, to not affect it. Right. Right. <laughs> so that's kind of the thing. That's a great statement. You know, one of the, one of the questions I had when I started Chinese medicine, I remember one of my classes, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about all these different points and all the things that each one of them can do by themselves. And then you pair them together the right ways. And I remember asking one of my professors, I said, is there a way to screw this up? Like, is there some way I can make this wrong? You know, like, it seems like anything I just stick a needle in is going to be fine. Like something's going to be okay. And honestly, what I've come to find is that's almost true <laughs> to a certain point you elicit a response regardless of how good the response might be. Hmm. It's not necessarily that something's going to be detrimental, which is what you can be afraid of if you, you know, have something go wrong or you take the wrong medication or you, you know, whatever. But the reality is it just may not be as optimal for that patient. And so, you know, if somebody needs a, a treatment that's going to help to clear the liver yang and I start to, you know, tonify the kidney yin, I didn't screw anything up, but I may not have helped them very well. Interesting. And so that's kind of, again, that's kind of the thing, but just like I, I always compare acupuncture and exercise and they're so broad acupuncture, you know, doesn't matter what we're treating essentially, like there's a systemic reaction as well as the local benefit of what I'm targeting, the, the pathology that I'm after hmm. with exercise, there's, you know, you can do lunges all day to help strengthen your legs and even stabilize your back and help your knees and your range of motion and your balance. Um, but it's also just the act of exercise is going to help you sleep better, have better digestion, you know, give you mood stabilization, all these things. There's not an exercise that does those things. It's mm -hmm. just a systemic reaction to the act of doing what you're doing. And in some cases, I see that kind of play out in, in acupuncture. I, I love that. Um, so, uh, Rob, you, uh, you said that so nicely, um, that, and I love the concept, the, the mindset of the, uh, of the Eastern medicine, like you were saying there, that all stressors are the same, right? Regardless if it's physical, mental, emotional, uh, chemical, whatever it is, it's affecting the body the same way. Right. And, uh, and I love that rather than separating all these things out, it's, well, it's having the same effect. So let's treat it the same. Right. Um, and that's, uh, it, and that's just amazing. And the bottom line is if we're stimulating parasympathetic nervous system, Right. If we're stimulating vagus nerve, we are going to see something positive happen. A big uh, cascade systemically. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is, uh, that is just so cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, another, so I want to, I want to ask now, as we've touched on the vagus nerve already, um, is you have done a very cool procedure on a couple of my patients. Um, and, and you've done some research along with this as well. Um, is the vagal dart. Um, and although that does sound kind of scary, I, uh, and from what my patients have told me, um, is, is, is a little scary. 
<laughs> um, but uh, but winds up with uh, with very good results, which uh, I still want to have it done to me, uh, just so I yeah. can experience it. Um, Absolutely. So I'm gonna. <clears throat> I'm going to do a quick, uh, what my patients have, uh, have told me, um, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure they may not tell me the same thing that they tell right. you. We'll find out right here. So this crazy guy that you sent me to, um, <laughs> that's a, sorry. No, um, no, but, uh, is that he essentially pierces their ear with, uh, with a, a, a type of device that ends up staying in the ear for, uh, I believe about a week, um, and then falls out on its own. But what is reported is that symptoms of just about anything completely disappear. Um, almost Absolutely. immediately. Um, mm-hmm. I've sent somebody to, uh, somebody specifically and Rob, you'll know who I'm talking about. Um, who he could barely, he could barely, you know, move his back was in such discomfort and, um, and he was, he was like, I don't know what to do. He's like, you know, I'm going on this trip. I'm going to, uh, he was going to hiking in Colorado, but somewhere by you, Matt. And, um, and he's like, I don't know what Dr. Rob did. It hurt like hell for a second. He goes, and then all of a sudden I can move. He goes, I went to Colorado, hiked through the mountains, was totally fine. He's like, never felt a thing. So uh, Rob, can you please tell us about this, uh, about this amazing thing, uh, a little bit of the background um, and then what exactly it is doing. Sure. Yeah. That was actually one of the last times I saw him too. He got back and he said, Hey, you did awesome. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A, a, little too trip. Good. a little too good. <laughs> See ya. A very typical patient, right? Ironically, also a doctor. <laughs> well, Western medicine, you need to like have a eight time uh, regimented right. uh, intervention there. You got to <laughs> spread that out a little bit. <laughs> That's right. I screwed that one up. <laughs> no, it, you know, yeah, you're right. The, uh, you know, it, it utilizes ear acupuncture. And so I was very fortunate um, to, uh, to, in the same way, be, be friends and colleagues with um, uh, Dr. Frank Urasek, who is, uh, he was a, an instructor at National University when I was there. Um, he has been a pioneer in acupuncture in, in, you know, this country for years. He's done so much with veterans. He's done so much with auricular stuff, but just body acupuncture. I mean, he was an acupuncturist before, not just before it was cool, but before it was legal. You know, I mean, he was, he was, he was like kind of a the quintessential like rebel acupuncturist, I guess. Awesome. Um, and surprisingly, um, you know, he's studied several times over in China, all kinds of things, but he is the, he's the director of acupuncture at Stroger Hospital. Um, and so I was fortunate not just to have him as an instructor for some of my didactic courses, but also to be an internship coordinator for, you know, my experience at Stroger Hospital. And we, that's where we actually conducted the study in the pain management department. There is an acupuncture section to the the pain department at Stroger Hospital in downtown Chicago. Um, One of the largest hospital systems and and has one of the highest number of patients as far as coming in and specifically with trauma. Um, And so we actually treated a number of patients with this ASP, this, um, it's a, it's a French needle. It's a semi-permanent needle. And sometimes they do call it like an ear dart, vagal dart, um, auricular dart, but it's a semi-permanent needle. They come in three different uh, metal types, basically. So there's gold, which is the primary one. There is just a regular old steel. And then there's like a titanium that they use, which I've honestly never played around with. They don't make them very often, but the gold and the steel work really, really well. And sometimes when you get really deep into it, it talks about the ion differences between the two metals and, and how, you know, that kind of works. I've not really delved into it that deeply, just utilizing the points and those darts makes a significant change. It's also part of a system. If you ever look up battlefield acupuncture, um, our military uses it for uh, field trauma. And so some of our military personnel that, that do, um, you know, field medical trauma, they're actually taught to, to work on some of these points in the ear. So this semi-permanent needle, it is a little aggressive compared to regular acupuncture when it goes in, because it is almost like you've got to pierce the skin and it stays in there. Um, but we use different points throughout the, the ear to help to stimulate those different, especially in pain points. Um, but we would stimulate those points to help with whatever dysfunction we're after. And it's, it's been very prominent in pain research 
And that's what we did with it. We, we presented a poster presentation at the Society of Acupuncture Research back in 2017, Dr. Yurisek and myself. Um, and we, we basically just talked about the benefits of pain control through German auricular acupuncture, because there's a bunch of different people out there that have studied auricular acupuncture across the globe. Um, it's all based on the work of Dr. Uh, Paul Noget, um, who was a, a French neurologist, and he kind of started to chart. If you ever see those acupuncture ear charts with a, a upside down fetus kind of shape on it, that's kind of where Paul Noget got his information. And there is a Noget school. There's all kinds of different, um, you know, kind of ideologies of, of auricular acupuncture. But we used the bar system for our study in, in that case. Um, which is a, uh, a German system of auricular acupuncture. So it kind of, it worked really well as far as that goes, as far as the study was concerned. But when patients come in, we stimulate, again, a lot of pain control centers, we stimulate body points. Um, you can treat the entire body on the ear. Um, traditionally, the outer part of uh, the ear is actually more about like the skeletal structure, musculoskeletal system, the inner part of the ear, just like our inner organs. Um, we start to deal with more of the visceral components of that. Um, but I always talk, if you ever see the old school encyclopedias, the ones you have to actually open, not just thumb through on your iPad, actually open them. They have these like the clear cellophane sheets that you can like pull away and have those overlays. I remember those, yep. <laughs> There's, I, that was my favorite thing about an encyclopedia. Yes. I don't know if that's why I became a nerd or not, but like <laughs> I just kept playing with the encyclopedia. I could have been a cartoonist, who knows? Um, <laughs> But, you know, when you look at that, that's kind of how the ear overlays look like you look at the ear and then you move one and like you've got the musculoskeletal version, you've got the internal medicine version, you've got the body points version. Um, and so what's really cool about that, you know, kind of in the same vein of you can't really put a bad needle in is when you treat it, you're usually treating one of multiple systems, even over the same point, like the same region of the ear. Um, and so that's kind of an interesting thing. I combine a little bit of the German auricular with the, what's called the NADA system. I'm also a, an AccuDetox specialist, which is through the National Acupuncture Detoxification Association. And we treat a lot of, you know, it started out as treating addictions, alcoholism, uh, drug addiction, even nicotine, um, you know, trying to do smoking cessation. But it's really spilled over into so many different regions of mental health care stress and anxiety and just overall well-being um, that it's really it's really taken hold in, in a lot of people and there's different ways that you can treat that system too it's just a five-point system but I think that goes beyond what uh, the question actually was <laughs> no no that no that, that is all just uh, uh, just uh, awesome so I, I do want to follow up with the uh, with the study itself mm -hmm. um, so what were what were the outcomes uh, when you when you actually saw these patients who were who were in pain um, what happened to these patients and how quickly does, does this happen? It's honestly, just like our, our mutual patient, it's almost immediate. You know, I mean, once they get over the, whoa, what was that in my ear? Um, <laughs> you know, and usually it's just the pressure of getting the needle to actually to set. Um, but really it was almost immediate. And we had everything from chronic pain to acute pain. And honestly, some of these people were just waiting to get in to, you know, for their ablation or for an injection um, or for a surgical procedure. They just, they had to wait. And so they sent them to us and said, hey, here you go, I'll see what you guys can do. Um, kind of a last resort and that happens to me. <laughs> that happens a lot, right? Like, it's kind of like, I don't know, I've tried everything else that they say is supposed to work and it hasn't. So, hey, acupuncture, give it a shot. Um, That's a me and you are and, good for, right? <laughs> hey, you know what? Like I just had a, you know, 13 level fusion. Can you adjust me now? No, no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> can't work other stuff, but I'm not doing that anymore. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really one of those things. The study we saw, we saw that um, every participant actually had a pain reduction. There was only one participant that I recall that, that only had a one point reduction in their pain. Um, but as I recall, the, the pain was moderate. Um, and, and reduced a little bit further, but the majority of the patients that we saw had a significant reduction, three to five points in reduction of pain. One even had, you know, we get the two extremes, but one even had a nine out of 10 pain registry when they walked in, we treated with the dart and then honestly walked out with a zero to one. Um, wow. it, it, it's just fascinating. And we didn't get a chance to really, 
um, see those patients in multiple sequences in a short period. We saw them, you know, that's one of the great things about this treatment is, you know, just like in our mutual patients case, I'm not going to be able to see you. I can't get you back in here, you know, two or three more times over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to have to do something now that's strong, that's, you know, consistent and, you know, is going to give you some relief like now and for a while. Um, because it is, it has to be a longer term uh, gap in care. And so you put something in that's a much stronger stimulation, um, but also, you know, has a very good efficacy. It has a great outcome for most of those patients. So now you had said military uses this. Is that, um, mm-hmm. is that all branches of military? Is there a specific branch that uses this? And, uh, and you is know, that just the medical team that would be trained with this? Or how does that work? Yeah. As far as I know, now I'm not, I'm not real proficient in our military. I won't lie. Um, I had somebody school me a little bit one day and said, well, that branch of military doesn't even have a medical team. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> um, but from what, <laughs> from what I understand, uh, medics that are trained in our military system. So for whatever branches, those medics are a part of, um, are trained through the, through the, uh, the battlefield acupuncture system to learn some of the major trauma points auricularly and um, have been told by a number of our vets that they actually carry those in some of their trauma bags. No now, way. I would love it if somebody told me if that was true or false, but like, I, you know, that's what I've heard um, from those. And they, you know, they had, and uh, what was it? I believe it was Admiral Nimzow, um, who was a medical director. I believe he was a Naval medical director in some capacity. He's actually the one that brought it to the military in the first place. Wow. Um, as far as the history goes that I'm, I'm familiar with, um, at this point, but yeah, that is just so cool. Cause you think about like real tough guys who are getting real injuries and yeah. they're using this. Right. And that is, uh, yep. that is so cool. Um, yeah, they use it for a lot of the kind of the battle. That's why it's battlefield act when there's kind of a battlefield trauma situation and you can put a couple of these in They're real quick. They're out of the way. They don't cause any problems, so to speak. They're easy to carry because they're so small and bam, away you go. Nice. Oh man. Well, That's awesome. Uh, I, I'd love to jump in here. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, one of the, like, so, so it's kind of, a, uh, let me just say where my interest lies and I'd love to get your uh, piece on this is, you know, I, I find it interesting sort of being a student of, uh, you know, Chinese philosophy and again, uh, the, the, the practices that I'm a, a student of and a very early student, admittedly, you know, is, is the integration of Chinese medicine. It seems like from what I've read in China, it, you know, that there's a, the traditional and then there's the modern and there's a big and in between those. <laughs> it's not an or, it's not separate, it's not a different billing code, it's not out of pocket, in pocket, but it's a very, I don't even want to use the word complementary because I think we think about complementary as a one-way street. Uh, right. That isn't medicine, and uh, so one of my one of my goals with optimal HRV was, you know, especially with this energy medicine that has been so powerful, sort of in in my health and wellness, uh, often gets discounted. Uh, oh, it's just the placebo effect, which I think the placebo effect's amazing, regardless. But anyway, it's just like it, the, there's a you know there it's kind of put down or as a secondary. Uh, component of this. So one of the things I wanted to do with this was to say, okay, I can't really explain what's going on during a Reiki session, but I got people who swear by it. Um, I've done it myself. I can't explain why a part of me is heating up and then I squint to cheat to see what the heck is going on because I feel like I'm on fire and her hands are right above that area. And I'm like, this is really weird. So part of it was like, (laughs) I want, I want to know, like, is this improving my autonomic nervous system functioning, knowing that that's attached to everything I nerd out about the brain? And so one of it was like, just as an outcome as, hey, if we get HRV data as a proven biometric for a range of cognitive, social, emotional, medical health, then, then we can hopefully, you know, look at that model as saying, hey, these aren't complementary these are actual treatments that we can kind of hold up there, you know, so, so I would love to get how you look at that. And then, you know, I'm always interested in, 
what do you see, especially in your world with the chi uh, and chi energy, uh, what are we measuring with HRV in that sort of energy medicine, Chinese medicine, uh, you, you know, historical and modern pr practice? Sure. You know, I, let me work backwards on your question. because right. I like the, I, I really like that kind of that end there that what are we measuring? You know, when you compare that, you know, HRV study to, you know, how we talk about Chinese medicine, it doesn't matter modern or traditional at this, yes. this level, they're both on par with each other. Yes. It's the balance of yin and yang. So when we talk about that, you know, that kind of funky sphere, it's got one dot of black inside the white and one dot of white inside the black. That we talk about yin and yang as interdependent. And so there's always this constant ebb and flow and it's all relative. So, you know, the back of my hand is, is yang compared to the front of my hand, but, you know, it's also very yin compared to my shoulder or my neck. And so it, there's, there's a relativity to everything that we do. You're only so much yang within yin. Mm -hmm. um, the clock diagram that we talk about, like at high midnight is very, it's the most yin time. And as we work our way towards noon, which is the most yang time, we work our way you know, we're getting less and less yin as we continue to work around the clock. And then once we hit that point, now we're getting less and less yang again, right? Like um, when we talk about, you know, that concept of what is the autonomic nervous system doing? We talk a lot about, um, you know, adrenal fatigue in, in Western medicine, or at least in complementary medicine. Um, we're always talking about adrenal fatigue as burnout, right? People are overly stressed. There's lots of cortisol that can lead to abdominal fat. It can lead to a depressed mood and all these other eating disorders, all kinds of things that it could cause. But in Chinese medicine, we parallel that with what we would call spleen chi deficiency. So your spleen energy, nothing to do with what our, our Western medicine anatomical spleen does. <laughs> yeah. But the spleen in Chinese medicine is, is responsible for the movement or the energy is uh, uh, kind of manipulation. So it puts energy into the organ systems and areas it needs to called transformation and transportation. So you bring food in, for example, and I talk about calories with my clients a lot as chi. So the spleen basically assigns those calories to different body areas that it needs to work better. When we start to talk about those types of parallels, when I talk about spleen chi deficiency, we're always at some level of empty. And so when people talk about this relatively, I say you're only ever at your top most full point, like with your gas tank in your car, when you're at the pumps. Mm -hmm. Once you drive away, a lot poorer right now, you drive away from those pumps yes. and now you're somewhere lower and lower and lower. You wouldn't start your cross country track on an eighth of a tank of gas, right. right? You would want to top it off, but you can drive around town for days on a half a tank. And so this is that concept of like, you know, kind of where those two things start to meet and, and really that relative position of what you're looking at. So when we're talking about HRV work and we're talking about yin and yang balance, we're really talking about the same thing. It's just another, again, it's just, it's part of that part of terminology more than anything, as long as you understand how to parallel those two and where they parallel, I think that's really important. So, um, looking at HRV and how it associates with your relative overall balance of your system. Um, you know, there are, it's a cascade, right? So like when we think about different ways, the, the autonomic nervous system as a whole, um, you know, what part of that autonomic nervous system are we talking about? Are we talking about the heart rate regulation? Are we talking about digestive system? Are we talking about temperature regulation? Like, well, yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. We're yes. talking about all of it. Yeah. Like, and again, it's, it's an ebb and a flow. We've got, it's almost like when I think about a, you know, an organizational chart of a, uh, you know, of a business, there's all these different branches. And if each one of those branches had the balance scales at every section, you know, you're trying to keep all of these elements balanced the whole time while the whole thing is balanced as well. Yeah. And that's kind of, to me, the autonomic and the whole, you know, autonomic nervous system, parasympathetic and sympathetic working in tandem they're always at some level of flux, you know, yes. the ultimate house of cards. And so yeah. for me, that's kind of what I look at. And you're, when you're talking about heart rate variability, or you're talking about what you're assessing for yin and yang, you're assessing the totality of 
these balanced systems all working, hopefully in the right sequences to keep everything just right. <laughs> so yeah. it can, you know, it can auto regulate when it needs to, uh, because it's not a, it's not a static system. It's a homeostatic system. It has to constantly ebb and flow. And so if it's just stuck, you're screwed. You're probably dead. Yeah. But if you're just stuck, <laughs> <in flatline, clears throat> you're in trouble. Yeah. So that's, that's why I, 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 I'm on a personal mission to, uh, in psychology, we <laughs> label the sympathetic system, the fight or flight system. And I'm like, no, like, like we're, we're all like all or nothing in on these terms. And for some reason, in psychology, we have to label every stress response with an F which I, it's like, come on, people. We're like, we can evolve. Like, it doesn't have to, you know, but, but it's like- There are oh, other this, letters. Yeah, there are, there are. And it's okay. I mean, we don't have to create 20 of them. We can still have a handful and memorize them. But it's like, you, you know, it's like, if your sympathetic stops working, you're dead. Like, and so I, I love that, uh, the, the example that, that you gave us around that. So that's what I was thinking as uh, as Dr. Rob was talking is um, is I feel so fortunate to get to to talk to so many people uh, like yourself, Dr. Rob, where um, where each of you brings like this amazing new insight to to the autonomic nervous system uh, to HRV, and and it's your personal you know, your personal way of explaining it, uh, your personal understanding of it, and each time I hear one of those, my brain goes. <laughs> and, and I just expanded and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the way that he said that I'm going to start using that. That just, I just had this huge breakthrough realization. You know, it's, um, it's so cool. Um, I that expect we get a to... footnote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In Dave's next book. Yeah. I, I, I put gentle yeah. pressure on him to, to get his, his next book out. So. Well, well, uh, well with that, uh, Rob actually speaking of, uh, uh, I, um, I'm sending you, uh, what will probably be one of your, your more interesting cases. Uh, and, uh, and definitely one of the more interesting cases that I've received. Um, and Dr. Rob and I are going to get to co-work on this, uh, on awesome. this individual and, uh, and <clears throat> Rob, just as such, um, he will, uh, he will have been doing his heart rate variability measures, his baseline measures for, uh, just over a week by the time, um, you receive awesome. him. Oh, great. Great. And, um, and, you know, I think this might present an awesome opportunity, uh, to, to do a very interesting case report for us. Um, and I'm saying this on a recording, uh, so that, uh, so yeah. it forces me He's to locking it in. <laughs> That's lock right. This in. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, Dr. Kramer and I are just, uh, in, um, uh, Dr. Robert, uh, Dr. Uh, Gregory knows, uh, knows Dr. Kramer. He's the, uh, yeah. the Dean of research over at our, our university. And, um, anyway, him and I are just wrapping up uh, a case study. So I'm going to need another one to jump on. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so, Sounds like a podcast uh, episode too. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, but I think, I think this could make something very interesting. Um, you know, assuming Dr. Rob does his job, right. You know, yeah, that's, know. uh, yeah. <laughs> calling it out <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah it would it'll be very uh it'll be very interesting and to see that change um you know as well um uh, immediately post therapies uh if we can get all of this uh coordinated and everything too so yeah, yeah we have uh we have some amazing things on the horizon here but, very yeah. cool awesome yeah well um Oh, oh, go ahead, Matt, if you have. Yeah, so, so uh, Dave, I don't know if you have any. Uh, I've, I've got some other questions, but do you have any uh, before I jump back in? No, no, please. Yeah. Yeah, so so I would love to see. I know, no, no, we're working on getting some devices uh, to, to work with us. And really, especially as part of this conversation, even more excited. Uh, Dr. Dave was already talking good about you, but to actually uh, get to know <laughs> you, uh, that's great. Where do you see, like, we're hitting this, point of biometrics. Uh, the, the biometric kind of revolution is, is here. Uh, even if you don't know it's on your wrist or, I, I mean, my phone right. just tells me how many miles I walked, whether, <laughs> yeah, whether I want to know or not, which is kind of yep. interesting. <clears throat> and at the same time, uh, Google just told me where I was four years ago and gave me a chart <laughs> of exactly. I'm like, Google, you, I didn't ask you t- 
do tell me that and how many oh, hours Google. I burned uh, <laughs> back in 2018 when a trip to Santa Barbara, where I wasn't probably having good heart rate variability at the time for what I was doing in Santa Barbara. Nothing <laughs> too outrageous, but uh, yeah. So I, I would love to see kind of with your expertise uh, in this is in this modern world where I, I think, you know, and I, I have on my bookshelf, a whole bunch of traditional Chinese philosophy. Uh, and I love the the modern, like the Qigong and others, which I know are rooted in that as a physical mm -hmm. manifestation of all that ancient knowledge. I just find it like so fascinating how the Chinese approach uh, health, wellness, uh, spirituality, and how that all comes together in a much more integrated way than it seems to have had in the West in most traditions. Now that we're wearing the, the watches where we've got all these devices, where do you see this sort of going with your sort of own work and, and focus about now that you, you've, we got 24 seven, you're giving it look like an Apple watch there. Apple has yeah. your biometric information every, all the time. Of every day. Uh, where do you see this sort of going into the future? Without going into alien takeover, I think we're going to talk about <laughs> that. That's Dave and I's other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, I'm on the wrong path. Dang it. <laughs> no, honestly, like I, I, I mean, maybe I can't say this on a podcast. Maybe it's it's uh, it's not it's countercultural. I hate technology. However, <laughs> did you look at your wrist? I just uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and his and earbuds, yeah. Know, and his ear oh yeah, and I'm on like four devices right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I suck at technology. However, I will say that one of the coolest things about most of the stuff, and I don't care if we're talking about HRV or VO2 studies to look at basal metabolic rate for metabolism, knowing when people change from their aerobic to anaerobic thresholds, when we're talking about exercise consumption and calorie regulation, right? So we're talking about the whole system and how they digest and how they utilize calorie and energy how their chi flows, how their bodies move, all of these great systems. When technology is used, used for good, right? Use your, your music for good, not for evil. Um, when technology is used for anything other than social media, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Amen So to when that. we look at yeah. some of these biometric things, I know I'm like, I'm so like not on Instagram. I'm not very good at anything. I'm trying to get Dave uh, to get a tweet out about videos. our book. I, I got him to sign <laughs> up. I do not have seen a tweet about the book yet, Dave. So, so you're a good oh, company man. here uh, with actually. All right. Books, That's so. good. <laughs> That's good. No, I love. So one of my favorite things, and I know this isn't quite heart rate variability verse, verse but, um, you know, I, I actually prescribe these things to patients on occasion, especially my Parkinson's patients or my fall risk prevention patients. Because if there's, you know, I mean, the, the whole concept of help I've fallen and can't get up, those alert bracelets were a great concept. These are so much more further reaching and can contact somebody without consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so when I know I have a fall risk patient, for example, I'm like, listen, for less than the cost of your prescription meds, you can put one of these on your wrist and have it every month, have the safety and the knowledge that if your husband goes outside and he's mowing the lawn and he trips over something or falls down and he can't come to get you, it will call you. Yeah. Things like that, I think are so paramount. And the way that we can have access to that data, depending on where it goes, is, is so great to be able to look back. Because one of the worst things about most patients is when I ask somebody just as simple of the simple question of like, how much water have you had today? Mm -hmm. They, they can't tell me the truth. This is one of the, the sad, the hard parts. They can tell me what they feel like they drank yep. or what they wanted to drink. But usually when you start to really peel back the layers, they tell you something that's a little inflated. So what I love about this stuff is it's objective data. That's just there. Yep. And so if they're wearing it, they have access to it. And so I love using that type of data and allowing it to help us, you know, determine beyond just typical subjective data of how's your pain level today? You know, were you able to carry groceries from the car to the house without a whole lot of pain today? Or could you carry four bags instead of two? You know, things like that, they are, they are good measurements, but this is another measurement of just body regulation. You know, where are we in terms of, you know, you're, you're kind of a blend of your mental and physical health and well-being. 
there's a reason why when I started looking into heart rate variability, I, I see a lot of benefit, you know, both camps are always, you know, like the psychological camp and then the physical camp and they're both kind of up and down, but I think the, the psychological camp has continued to run with it a lot longer and first way, way ahead of its time. Yeah. Um, and integrating things like yoga and, and other mindfulness practices, Qigong, Tai Chi, um, you know, those types of things that we utilize, you know, Chinese medicine, like you said, they kind of had a nail on the head. Like it's, it's breathing work. It's, you know, movement and mobility. It's finding your center, whether you want to call that, you know, um, you know, a mindfulness or meditative practice, whatever the case may be for you, or if it's just movement and you like to move you've got this, this kind of full blend of breathe, move, relax, and try to transcend where you are and what you're doing and what you're stressed about. Um, and I think HRV is a great way to, to analyze that. And if we can use some of these biometric data points to say, in my whole life, in my day to day, in my, you know, I was dealing, dropping my kids off at school, what happened to my HRV versus I was sitting down to dinner or watching TV. Like, what does that do to that data? Like what influences what parts of our autonomic nervous system? I think it's, it's going to be kind of a, a way to assess that for everybody and help them understand. That, that's awesome. And, and I, I don't want to ruin because I can't go out better than that statement. So Dave, <laughs> if you got another question, I'm sorry, because I'm going to probably screw it up. But, but I, I just got to say too, with my excitement is like from the mental health perspective, you know, using just the analogy of you did, does Dave and you working together yield better results than one of you alone? Like does a, does me referring somebody to get the vagal dart improve my outcomes as a trauma treatment expert? Uh, does chiropractic care uh, really supplement the, the treatment that, that I am trying to do. Because I, what I think is heart rate variability, really the, the vagal nerve, but you know the heart rate variability is a major of that, brings these things together in, in a way that I really hope uh, just, just really reinforces this revolution, uh, this paradigm shift that we have seen in psychology over the last 20 or so years now that we got the neurobiology uh, to do it is like it opens up this window is, hey, you and I together are probably going to be a lot more powerful than separate for some folks who, who need that collaboration. And we can sort of both have a language and actually an outcome measure to, to demonstrate that. And that, that's where like my excitement just yep. for this just is overwhelming is because it's like, let's figure out what heals this person and how do we put the right mix together to let that person live their best life? And, and for me, Absolutely. that's just like, ah, oh, it's so cool to be here because, you know, when I was trained, we were talking about the libido and all that kind yeah. of, so we didn't, we didn't, we weren't even talking about like the neurobiology. So it's so exciting. And unfortunately acupuncture gets thrown into the physical, but it gets eliminated. And, and so often movement medicines like yoga and Tai Chi, those are, those are integrated really well with psychological medicine. And we, we recognize those more, but acupuncture has so much to offer Yeah, psychologic medicine. And I, I would love yeah, to see that happen a lot more often. Absolutely. I've, I've seen it in the addiction realm, as you mentioned, Mm -hmm. um, yep. a, a little bit, but, but again, I, I, I think it's that we need that collaborative, like we, we need those collaborative studies, which we're horrible at because we're all in our silos. Um, so, so, you know, there's been good research. Uh, I've actually been part of helping fund acupuncture as part of substance use awesome. treatment, but it, you you know, your points, well, take, why isn't that in the same way in mental yeah. health? Uh, what, but I don't think we've had a way to talk about that as I don't think we've known why acupuncture's worked. Uh, you know, we just seen studies that it does. And so it's bringing this all together to say, hey, we're all working to improve the parts of the nervous system that we're no, we know is going to support sobriety or we're going to support mental health or, you know, how, how can I help Dave's patients potentially function in a way that they live their best life because are they holding psychological energy that we could work uh together on and, and that's to me is the exciting point that we're hitting where maybe yeah. we can figure out a better word than complementary 
uh, for all this uh, and have that integrated Absolutely. approach that our, we, our we've got a term coming up. I think all of us can create this new word. I've always yes. wondered how new words get formed for things, right? Like avatar, where did that come from? <laughs> Only in the technology world. Now we get to make our own. <laughs> that, that's right. We, but, uh, but the, you know, it, and that's it. And that's it. Um, you know, I, that collaborative approach between practitioners uh, is just the most powerful thing that any of us can have, uh, you know, as a patient or as a practitioner. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we are, uh, well, well, Dr. Rob, with your help, uh, I've been, uh, I've been crushing that, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm excited yeah, to that's... be a part of it. That's, that's the fun part. <laughs> Yeah, but no, this has been just absolutely amazing. Um, and, and we can't thank you enough for hopping on with us, Dr. Rob. Oh, I appreciate being here. I appreciate the invite. It was great. I'd love to talk more about some other stuff. It'd be fun. Oh, yeah. Well, that, there is a door that is always open. <laughs> uh, we're excited to get you. Uh, I don't know if we've said this on the podcast, but we have really uh, found uh, what we think is a really promising partnership with the BioStrap folks. Um, okay. That, that we have gotten some great data. Um, we have got some great feedback there, there, Dave, if you're on video, Dave's holding up, uh, the, the arm strap we're using, if you go to BioStrap's uh, website, we're using the, the $95 device that, that goes on your arm okay. or forearm. Uh, so we're excited to get you a few of those, uh, uh, and, uh, I'll welcome you to the optimal HRV family. Yeah. And, uh, we will definitely uh, have you back soon. So just for uh, our listeners, I will put uh, your bio and some links um, into the awesome. show notes at OptimalHRV.com. But just for maybe somebody that's listening in their car, what would be the best way to find out more about uh, the work that you do? Um, you know, honestly, like uh, if you just check out longevityfit.net um, and, and reach out there, I'd be happy to talk to anybody about what they're doing. Um, evidence-based acupuncture is a great uh, resource. It's a, it's a UK resource, but they do a lot with acupuncture research. The Society of Acupuncture Research is a, uh, is a global network of individuals that do a lot of things, um, medical practitioners that deal in, in acupuncture research. Um, but yeah, there's a, a go into battlefield acupuncture, go into um, the NADA, uh, the National Acupuncture Detoxification Association website all great resources to look into. There are a number of studies on not just the effect of acupuncture on the vagus nerve dating back, you know, again, 20 plus years, but also the effects of, you know, acupuncture on HRV um, in some, some cases as well that need to continue to see some expansive research. Like you said, I hate to, I hate to add more to it, but like you said, unfortunately, when we add more variables then it adds the opportunity for people to say, well, you don't know which variable did what. Yes. You know, so our limitations are, our, are the same thing as our benefits, unfortunately, in a lot of our research studies. And so if we can, if we can do both and give it a yes and and see positive results on both ends of the study where there's lots of variables, and only one variable and still show its effectiveness, you can't argue that, you know, you can't argue with it. Awesome. So. Well, thank you. Like I said, we'll, we'll put the contact information in the show notes as well. But uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Gregory, for joining us. Uh, I'm already looking forward to our next conversation. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Dr. Rob.